there goes the fast freight train from Kansas City to Chicago. One mile of freight cars passing day after day by this gate, right on time. Let's go back a few hours to the freight yard at Kansas City. It's 8 o'clock in the morning. The conductor and the rear brakeman have orders to report for duty on the Chicago freight number 40. The conductor is the captain of the train. The yardmaster brings him a list. That's all there is of our train at 8 a.m. Just a list filled with numbers. Numbers telling which cars are scheduled to leave for Chicago at 9.30 this morning. Each freight car has a number on its side with the name of the company which owns it. And each whole train has a number instead of a name, like our fast freight number 40. Other trains have brought cars to this yard from all over the western United States and Canada. Now they are still strung together. And the ones that are to go to Chicago on number 40 must first be unscrambled. This man has the job of separating cars for all trains. To do this, he orders the cars to be pushed up this hill called a hump. When they are over the hump, the cars roll downhill all by themselves. On the hump, a man separates one car from another by pulling out the pin which holds them together. On their way over the hump, all cars pass above an inspection pit. The strong lights show the bottom of cars. If the inspector finds anything wrong, he squirts white paint on a wheel as a sign that the car must go to the repair shop. Two tech cars for number 40. And two cars go down the tracks together. The switch and brakeman watches from another tower. He can see 56 tracks branching out like fingers of many hands, each track for one train. One track is for freight train number 40 going to Chicago. With a flick of his wrist, the man moves a switch. And the heavy gondola swings to the Chicago track. Now he pushes a button. A car filled with plate glass rolls down from the hump. The huge claws grip the wheels and slow them down. The car stops for a moment and then coasts along at just the right speed. Another touch on the button. Another car is slowed down and switched to the Chicago track. express car follows the others on its way to Chicago. Next comes a load of steel pipe for train number 40. And a piece of machinery from Texas, traveling back to Chicago for repairs. Men in other towers move other cars to other tracks. All cars move at just the right speed, so that they will touch the next car without damage to its load. A brakeman couples together the cars for our train. There they are, a long line of freight cars strung together according to the numbers on the conductor's list. But this is not yet all of number 40. Here are some more cars for our train. In the icing dock, a machine fills the refrigerator cars with crushed ice so that the fruit and vegetables from the Rio Grande Valley and from California will stay fresh for the markets in the east. It's past nine o'clock. A switch engine is ordered to pull number 40 to the station for departure. There it goes to the departure track. 
In another part of the yard, the front brakeman, the engineer, and the fireman check the time and board the road engine. The conductor receives his last orders. The front brakeman pilots the diesel engine to the departure track at the freight station. From the bridge, the conductor can see the engine hooking up to our train. And there comes the caboose, where the conductor and rear brakeman ride. Finally, number 40 is complete. Between 8 o'clock and 9.30, a mile of freight cars were all sorted out and put together. Every wheel and every brake is checked before the train leaves. Inspection's over. This man inspected the front part of the train. Fast freight number 40 for Chicago is all ready for the trip. The engineer takes over. Slowly, he starts the long line of cars rolling. The front brakeman sits at the window of the engine cab and looks to the rear. That's how he checks the train during the trip. The conductor jumps on the train last. He signals, I'm on, and the engineer knows that it's safe to increase speed. The sign reads 15 miles, and 15 miles reads his pedometer. Green light means go, and the engineer shifts to higher speed. Meanwhile, the conductor settles down in his office in the caboose to check his travel documents and read his orders. Freight train number 40 is carefully winding its way through the many tracks that lead out of the freight station. special seat in the caboose, the rear brakeman keeps watch. By radio telephone, he can tell the engineer when the rear end of the train has passed a curve or a trestle. Then the train can pick up speed again. The engineer keeps his eye on the road all the time, and his ears alert for any warning, like now. Signal crackers. Repairmen put them on the tracks to tell the engineer to slow down. You see why? While number 40 speeds eastward, another freight train is on its way west from Chicago. Mile after mile, station after station pass by swiftly as our train travels at a maximum speed of 60 miles. Again, the engineer slows down to 20 miles an hour. It's not safe to hurry across a bridge. But as the last car leaves the bridge, the engineer speeds up again. Soon, the freight train arrives at its first stop. The engineer switches over to a side track, and a passenger train pulls into the station. The conductor steps out to watch for the go-ahead signal. One minute later, the passenger train pulls out of the station. Here's the signal. Now the Chicago freight can follow the... The engineer calls the brakeman, who's a mile away at the other end of the train. Let me know when we pass the crossing, he asks. Fast freight number 40 is picking up speed again. A mile of freight cars, over a hundred of them, passing this gate day after day, carrying freight from many parts of the country to the big markets of Chicago.
and the industrial east